Hi everyone, so I wanted to do a little video here on this new announcement of context caching, which is now supported using the Gemini APIs and particularly the Flash 1.5 model is what I'll be using. And I'll show you an example of how this works. I was really curious about this feature and how I may go about using something like this. Why would it be useful? Actually, this led me to an idea that I wanted to explore for a bit now. So I maintain this ML Papers of the Week. This is my weekly newsletter. So every Sunday we send out some of the top and most interesting papers around machine learning on large language models. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to take this repo and well, specifically this readme file. So this is just a text file. And I wanted to do some analysis on this. We have been recording the top papers for the last year or so. And I wanted to just do an analysis on all the summaries that we did. So you can see the papers here. Um, I have the paper and, and summary of the paper as well. So using that context, those summaries, if I can do like quick analysis, ask it questions about what's the latest on non-context LLM, I think that could be useful as a researcher. So that's something I want to do. And I can quickly do that analysis, I guess, using something like the 1.5 Pro, those Gemini models. And I want to use context caching because one thing I would love to do here is I would just love to dump all of this into the context and be able to query it as much as I want. So if I have a session that I want to perform, for instance, and let's say it's 30 minutes, an hour, I want to store this in cache. And every time I you know, query this model, I don't want to be always returning the same um, text file here, all the summaries that I've already documented, right? I just want to do that once, cache it, then ask questions about it. I think it's an interesting use case for me at least. And so I'll show you how I do that in code now. So here is a short notebook I put together, and this is based off of the official Google uh, Gemini uh, tutorials. So what I've done is I've converted that readme file into a text file, so you can just download it directly from my repository. And this is how it looks. Right, so it has all those papers that we have collected and we have summarized. So you have week by week, at least 10 papers every week that we summarize. And it's a lot of text, right? And sometimes I just want to ask it questions about what has happened. And even for someone like me that keeps up with the field and summarizes these papers, sometimes I do forget certain things, right? That may have happened that are important. And I just want to see if I can recall some of those at least innovations or maybe some experiment or finding that was reported in one of those papers, which I do highlight in my newsletter. So I'll go back here and this is my notebook. I'm using the Google Generative AI library. So I just install that and then I do the typical import. Um, yeah, I'm just importing this. I'm using load.env to import my environment variables. I just set this up. You can get that on Google Studio. And once I have that, then I can just export specify the file name and then what i'll do now is i'll just upload the file so i'm uploading the file and this will be available for the model and this is just checking whether the file has been processed um, so again this is just a text file yeah once i have that text file i can check whether it's available it's available here and then now i can go and create a cache and so the way you create a cache is very simple you create a cache using this function here and then you specify the model in this case i'm using this model here from Gemini 1.5 Flash. Uh, I give it a name. So this is the way to identify the cache. I give it an instruction in this case, you're an expert AI researcher and your job is to answer questions based on the file you have access to. And it will just answer your questions by, based on that file. Um, and here you can set the TTL, so time to live. This is how long this particular um, prompt and also this text file will be put together in a cache for you so it will be 15 minutes in this case you can define whatever so if i want to do a one hour session analysis i just say you know the amount of minutes 60 minutes um, i can create a model here very simply and then provide the cache now i have that model and i can now query that model so i ask it a question like can you please tell me the latest ai papers of the week so this one gave me the latest papers so here by the way i haven't updated the repo for the last week so what you are seeing here is from the week before. And I thought this is a mistake with the model, but no, actually I haven't documented that. So I learned something here and I need to go and fix it. Um, I'll do that in a couple of minutes. So yeah, this looks correct. I mean, I get the summaries. This is nicer, it's in a nicer format. If you look at the actual text file, it has like the paper links. If I wanted that, I probably could retrieve that as well. But this looks okay for the last week. Then I can query it more 
Now, sophisticated queries, in this case, I can ask it, can you list the papers that mention Mamba? List the title of the paper and summary. So I'm interested in, in all the Mamba models and all the Mamba papers. So here are the ones that we have featured. So it's Mamba2, Moi Mamba, and Mamba Byte. And give me a little summary because I mean, it has access to that summary, right? So it's pretty useful. I'm doing the analysis and maybe while I'm actually putting together the newsletter, maybe I want to refer to maybe another paper as well or refer to a finding, then I can easily do that here, right? I just need to mention the question and it will provide it for me. So as a researcher, I think this would be useful, right? Rather than going and manually doing the search or query on that repo, I can you know, do it this way. And it helps me because again, it's really hard to memorize, right? For us humans to memorize all these papers. So I have summarized these papers for over a year now, and I read a lot of papers, right? But I do forget certain things and certain findings. And sometimes I do remember the paper maybe by keyword, and I can easily do it this way because I'm using natural language. So that's the power of the language model. Uh, but combined with this, this context caching is pretty powerful because then I can just do sessions and I don't really need to be wasting those prompt tokens, right? Because I just need to cache it once and then I can just query it like this. So here's another example here. This is a nice one. So what are some of the innovations around long context LLMs? List the title of the paper and summary. So these are the ones. And I just look at this, right? And this is pretty nice because it gives me some of those papers that you know, maybe I want to go and check again and read again. And uh, sometimes when someone asks me, hey, do you have a paper that you want to recommend? Maybe something like this would be useful. So I think creating an interface for this, I think is really powerful, right? Like if I can create a simple app, a web app, where I can allow it to like basically store this in cache, and it has access to all this information, then I can query it, right? And users can query this as well. So it could be a nice little service for researchers, but just wanted to highlight it here. You know, I can add a lot more information to this as well, but I think it's really powerful. Very excited about this feature. Uh, congrats to the Gemini team and all the folks working behind that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the work that they're doing. And I keep following some of the features that they are putting together. And I think this is a helpful one for developer. I also want to experiment with this with more like agentic workflows, which is something I'm working on as well. So I'll have some more examples of that later on. Stay tuned.